Hello, this is Haku Bean, and today we are going to be reading SCP-001 Proposal, Daybreak. This is going to be a long proposal. So chances are it will be a multi-part Right, sort of proposal just because I don't have a time or bandwidth to be uploading a two hour long video like the 096 video. Anyway, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get right into this. Find the access tunnel, hidden within a natural cave a mile off the main road. You don't need a key a card. The door is ajar. It smells here. It smells like... them. Hopefully, they've moved on. You've come so far already, you can't turn back now. There is a slick trail that leads from the cave entrance into the depths of this site. If it's blood or shit, or something that's smeared off one of those things you cannot tell. You make a point to avoid it. You're still receiving the distress signal. It only started broadcasting yesterday. Whoever it is, you pray they're still alive. Your footsteps echo throughout empty corridors. Each footfall sounds for all the world like a dozen, as we are not treading through the dark alone. Elevator is down, so you take the stairs, ending on floor B5. Ketter holding. You pass several empty containment chambers. The horrors they once held are long gone. If you're lucky. This trail takes you to an office branching off the main hall. The source of the signal. The door is cracked open, but stuck. You plant your feet, push with all your might. So it scares out of one of the rooms to your left and around the corner before you get and get a good look at it. Your first thought is dog. It was on the ceiling though. You take refuge in the room, slam the door behind you. It's dark here. You're safe. Take off your, your jacket and head wrap. It'd be a damn shame to die from something like hypothermia after all that's happened. The sole operating emergency light rotates in its casing, casting a pale orange glow across the room every other second, as if the room itself had a pulse. There are shelves haphazardly placed behind the door. A barricade. You scan the room. Sorrowed clothes, having food. Despite the a presence of an adjoining restroom, there is excrement in a bucket in the corner. A pneumatic chamber on the northern wall would have been delivering consumables to the occupants. The trail terminates in the corner of, your, of the room, forming a sick puddle. You spot three emergency bottles. Further inspection reveals them to be various opioids. All empty. There's a desk with a computer at the top of it. Approaching the terminal, you can clearly see the blinking light of the power button. You take a seat and turn it on. Emergency protocol activated. Clearance level safeguards removed. Full access granted. Loading. 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 Your footsteps just outside the door. Every first step comes down heavy. The second drags behind it. Loading, 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 loading. Authenticating. A dark shape blots out the light streaming into the slit between the floor and the doorway. Authenticating. Authenticating. You tense up with weight, with vapor. At praying you will pass. You damn the deafening thump. I think of your heart for betraying your position. Please wait. Please wait. Please wait. The shower recedes. You breathe a sigh of relief. 
just as the screen comes to life. Opening file. Automated secure system of notification code 235. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. I sneezed. Yay, I'm getting on a Twitter account that's known for er, posting VTuber sneezes. There's been an error in receiving the current and iteration of these SCP-001 file. You're currently reviewing revision number 3. New revisions could be accessed at the bottom of this page. Access file 001. Revision number 3 out of 12. Audio file. We are not going to actually listen to that because we shouldn't. Revision 3 out of 12. Updated at, at 1312 days ago. Item number SCP-001. Object class Apollyon. Special containment procedures. Due to its nature, SCP-001 cannot be contained. Survivors of the SCP-001 eventization within secure facilities are to remain in contact with one another. Personnel are engaged to attempt to reach Site 5. Personnel are to remind that there is no Site 5. Site 19 by any means at their disposal. Personnel with knowledge of the whereabouts of the L5 Council to relay this information to the Administrator. Survivors attempted to travel outdoors must fully cover their bodies in protective clothing, preferable several, preferably several layers. Travel by foot should be limited as much as possible. Cities and man-made structures in general provide the greatest protection. Formerly wooded areas should be circumvented. Travel by air is preferably is, prefer, or is preferable above all other methods. First, no exposed SCP-001 are to be considered lost. Carmine's personnel are to be abandoned. Euthanization is not to be attempted. Collective instances of SCP-001-A are, uh, that are of a formidable size are to be avoided at all costs. Good effective electrical weapons have proven partially effective at immobilizing instances, instances and may be used for self-defense. Incendiary weapons work as well. Pyronic munition, munitions are the most effective thus far. Testing has revealed that SCP-001 is that SCP-001-A is relatively safe to consume. This is only to be considered as last resort in the absence of other options, as SCP-001-A may constitute may reconstitute within the digestive system. Only small portions should be consumed at time to prevent blockage. Personnel stationed at Site-19 are to pursue research. Concerning off-world colonization, shells must be constructed as to not allow light to, put, to penetrate the interior. To those of you with families, or God forbid children, I'm deeply, deeply sorry. You must push on. Do not let their deaths be in vain. We do still have time. Humanity may still have a future. Come to Site-19. We need all the hands we can get. Learn to embrace the darkness, friends. Fear the light. The Administrator. Description. SCP-001 is the des destination given to the, the Sun after an event on the System Error Data Loss, EC-172, Contact system admin, resulting in 6.8 billion casualties within the first 24 hours. This event has been categorized as S XK Triangle Class Solar Singularity Scenario. SCP-001 does effect does not seem to result from exposure to ultraviolet rays, but rather light in the visual spectrum. 392 nm, 100 whatever that means. The effect is similarly present in moonlight. 
Upon contact with visible light produced by the sun, living organisms liquefied at the point of contact with the effect spreading until the entire organism is converted. Usually this is reminiscent of melting wax. The time this takes is largely dependent on the level of exposure and the size of the organism. Despite this restructuring, at no point do living organisms perish. Upon completion, these organisms, SCP-001-A, take on a gelatinous consistency. Multile organisms will attempt to orient themselves in a fashion where isn't in of their previous form to varying degrees of success. Flora uh, typically remain inert and are so capable of photosynthesis and so produce oxygen. Organisms capable of flight lose the capability to do so. Fauna remain silent and display behavior that parallels are non anomalous counterparts with and not absorbed into a collective incense. Humans retain a modicum of sapience and memory. Biological anomalies exposed to SCP 001 and are affected in the same manner. It seems that exposure nullifies any previously expressed anomalous characteristics due to their composition. Instances of SCP-001 that may contact with one another may combine and blend at the, mono at the molecular level. This does not seem to cause any pain or distress to the instances, though the resulting bulk can inhibit movement. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives, which seems to possess no maximum volume. The resulting biomass is amorphous and chaotic. The component organisms will shift between a full to semi-liquid state. Limbs and bodies will rise periodically from within the mass for a short duration before deteriorating and being subsumed by another life form. Collective instances will locomote by using their appendages in tandem to carry the mass. Larger instances will use a pseudopod from their constitute life forms and drag themselves about and enter similar to amoeba. Open and attach audio log. Access granted. A harsh stag lashes out of the speakers. You open the file. It disturbs the stillness of the room, catching you off guard and quickens your heart's pace. There's some handling noise as the recorder adjusts their microphone. A brief moment of silent pass silence passes and then <clears throat> This is Dr. Or Logan Enegata. Level um three researcher. There's a quiver in her voice, oh, I got the voice wrong, that betrays her attempts at professionalism. She pauses, takes a deep breath, and continues. Due to Site-46's possession of several immunicable infrahazards, we have been cut off from the rest of the network uh, under blackout protocol. As such, I'll be updating this as we come across new information. On the bright side, we are actually still receiving transmissions from a few sites. A good a number of personnel have made it, it seems. Some are planning to make a break for 19, some are trying to fight at the dash, as some, like us, are simply biding their time. Our side is sealed for the time being. We're not ready for the journey. At least not yet, she sighs. We experienced a containment breach a few days ago. One of the higher maintenance humanoids broke loose. Son of a bitch compromised containment on half, uh, half a dozen ketters and ran off. They didn't make it more than five feet from the tunnels before collapsing in a soup. I, I watched it play out on the cams. It didn't take long for them to get back up. <clears throat> She stops ahead, mutters to herself in confidence, believe before you hear the unmistakable sound of a match strike. She exhales audibly. Ah, much better. Not exactly a desert smoke area, but what the hell, right? She clicks her throat. <clears throat> Commander Ann and Udevin went to town and on them the next day, tried to drive them off. It didn't turn out very well. Poor bastard. But we did learn a thing or two at least. Pause. Exhale. <sighs> There's only a few of us left here. I'm one up in one of the offices. 
Jerry and Director Phillips are somewhere in the barracks. Clyde and a few D's lock themselves in the armory with Ari. I really should see how she's doing. She trails off for a moment before you hear the buzz of radio chatter. Hey hon, how are you holding up down there? A voice responds, a man with an exaggerated mocking tone. Mocking tone. I'm doing just fine, Poopsikins. I want you to know I love you bunches. <laughs> Who? Knock it off and put her on the phone, damn it! I need to speak with her. There's a clamor on the other end while the radio changes hands. A soft voice calls out concern. Babe, what's wrong? Um, uh, nothing, nothing. I just want to check in real quick. I'm fine, babe. Really, I can take care of myself. A creak. Logan shifts in her seat. No, no, I know that. I can't help it, though. I know coming here was never easy for you. Pause. Exhale. Logan continues. And with everything going on, I... Hey, you told me to quit smoking! There's a ruckus as he got a presumably attempt to snuff her cigarette. Uh, oh, uh, no, no, of course my... Not, I mean, I did. I did stop. Ari doesn't sound convinced. I don't think I'm the one you need to worry about. I'm staying clean. I haven't even thought of touching even Essex in months. Trust me. Anyway, since you were wondering, I'm fine. The guys are sitting around playing cards. I'm talking to an accordion with my notebook. Sweetheart, penning a sonnet about my undying love of a time like this. I'm flattered. I respond to the faint laugh. An elegy at the moment. I feel like if I don't keep myself busy doing something, I'll go crazy locked down here. I know what you mean, hon. I'll let you get back to it. I love you. Love you too, babe. A moment of silence, then a match strike followed by an audible exhale. And that's all of us. Everyone else wants... I was either topside during the event or they were killed in the breach. Director's orders are safe put to keep an eye on the cams, both in and around the facility. We've got the O1s and skips being at our front and door, and God knows what else was locked in here with us. We still have electricity. We should be. We should for quite some time. And the place is stocked with enough supplies to last aside a couple of years. We're going to be fine for now. Everything's going to be fine. She waits to be before ending the transmission. That was SCP-001 when day breaks. Obviously, it wasn't the entire file. There was a lot more to read. But as I mentioned earlier, I need to make this video short and sweet for you all. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I think I'll be continuing. I'll be continuing with this tomorrow. So until then. Goodbye.